Thank you, Pramod. Uh, I'll, uh, like he did, confine myself uh, to the act, and actually I'll confine myself to uh, the topic, which says, uh, will the electricity, electricity act continue to fail to deliver? That's what uh, you said in the first instance, and subsequently you added the word to consumer. In fact, when I got the first version, I was wondering, uh, what do you mean by will the Electricity Act fail, continue to fail to deliver, and then to whom? Subsequently, you added that to the consumer. Now, the first thing I would like to say is, uh, an act by itself does not deliver anything. I mean, an act simply states an intention, it gives you what uh, uh, the policy makers, the parliamentarians, what they want to do, they state all that, they state a few things, and then you are expected to take further actions to um, implement the act, to meet the intentions of the act. So if you take further actions, and if you implement those actions, then, shall we say, the act will get acted upon and will deliver. Now, if you look at the same Electricity Act, and if you look at certain segments other than distribution, and uh, consumer to a large extent would be with distribution, although the actions being taken for generation, for transmission, for market development, everything is for the consumer. But the last mile is very important, so distribution is extremely important. So if you look at the Electricity Act post-2003 and how it has panned out and what it has done, and if you look at segments other than distribution, you see a lot of growth. The fact of uh, huge capacity coming in has been mentioned the last few years. Private sector coming in a big way in uh, capacity addition has been mentioned. Captive generation has come up. Transmission has moved on. Open access at least up to the uh, interstate has uh, more or less uh, been happening. Market has developed. Power exchanges are there. People are selling and buying power and so on. So if you look at segments other than distribution, uh, you would see that uh, the Electricity Act has, has done something, probably we can call it, it has delivered. There's much more to deliver, but it has done something. You can't really say that the Act did not do anything. Now, even if you look at the distribution segment, you find that uh, certain states which have used the distribution segments or the provisions relating to distribution, uh, states which have used them have succeeded in uh, at least ensuring that the distribution company is in a healthy condition. So I'll come to as to why you need to have a healthy distribution company shortly. Now, the act has been, the point I'm trying to labor is only this, that the act will not deliver anything by itself. The act has, or the actions taken under the act has delivered many things in segments other than distribution. And in distribution also, it has delivered certain things. We decided to have a look at the act uh, 10 years after its enactment uh, coming into force to look at what needs to be done, what ails the act, what, does it, what do we have to do. So some suggestions have come. We've had different groups going into uh, reviewing the act. Uh, I would uh, say that there is no earth-shaking change that has been suggested to the provisions of the act except for separation of carriage and content, which I'll come to subsequently. It's still in initial stages. A lot of thought will have to go into it. So at the end of all this, what I want to say is that the act seems to be all right. The implementation of the act, further action to be taken under the act, is probably where the problems lie. We'll have to look at what can be done to take actions under the act. Now. One of the major difficulties we have is uh, the distribution segment. And since we are still grappling with uh, the financial difficulties of distribution companies, something that we talked about in the early 90s, in the early uh, 2000, now the early 2010s and so on. So every decade we've been talking about the difficulties of distribution companies, their finances. Uh, if a, Entity is not going to be financially viable, commercially viable. It's not going to deliver anything to anybody. So 
one of the first things that we have to see is that the distribution companies, the electricity boards are viable, do well financially, commercially, and so on. And if you look at the act, whatever you need to do to make them commercially viable is mentioned there. It's a very broad uh, provisions which are given there. Uh, you cannot be more specific. Then when we found that distribution tariffs are not being revised, we were wondering whether these provisions need to be changed. The tariff policy mentions certain provisions. We were wondering whether these need to be brought into the act. And of course, a lot of people went into it. The experts said that this is not required. So the tariff policy has to be read in uh, harmoniously with the act. Tariff policy actually conveys the intentions of the act. So there's no difference. We need not bring anything into the act. In fact, one of the things that we mentioned was the if the petition, tariff petition, is not filed by the distribution company, then the regulator should look at the petition, Siumoto, you should not wait for a petition. Probably this can be brought into the act to give it more force. It's only that it already is forceful, the regulator can do it, but if somebody feels that he needs to be empowered through a provision in the act, bring it into the act, otherwise it's not even required. So whatever you need to uh, improve the functioning of the distribution company, whether it is financial difficulties, whether it is theft of electricity, which is a big problem here, whether it is reducing at and losses, you find everything mentioned there. It is only a question of taking further action. Look at at and losses, for instance. Although the act does not directly mention, doesn't use the word franchisee, the act indicates that you can, a distribution licensee can always get his work done through someone else, and that chap doesn't need to get a license. It doesn't mention the word franchisee. But there are state governments which had gone ahead, distribution which has gone ahead and employed franchisees very successfully. So the point I'm saying is, you don't need specific things in the act. The act gives you an overall view of what can be done. And someone who's decided to use the act uh, to decide, to decide what you know, to deliver what he wants done, he's free to do it. There's no problem. Uh, a contentious thing would be Section 11, where directions are given by state governments to generators to stop uh, supply of electricity. I mean, again, uh, fairly imaginative use of Section 11, extraordinary circumstances. It has been used imaginatively because the state government decided that they would not like to do it. I'm not saying it is right or wrong. The question is, if you're imaginative, you can use it. Look at uh, uh, the issuance of REC, for instance, the renewable energy certificates. Very good thing, of course, it has other difficulties now, but REC doesn't get a mention anywhere in the act. The, in fact, renewable energy support is something vaguely mentioned, market developed and all that, and the CRC decided to go ahead, use that imaginatively, and issue this instrument now, this instrument is in difficulties, problems are elsewhere. Nobody is, I think, questioning the competence of the person who issued the instrument. Nobody is questioning the instrument itself. People are looking at how can you make this better. So ACT, I believe, is fairly fine, further supported by the fact that all the big wigs, the experts, have not suggested anything great to the ACT so that it can function better, the distribution companies can function better. So. Um, and now, it again brings me to one more point, saying that even today, after 1990, 2000, 2010, we are still struggling with uh, distribution company finances. I mean, I dear, really pity the distribution company officials, the regulators, they're still dealing with these problems. Whereas they should be looking at the problems of the consumer, the, consumer, the quality of supply, quantum of supply, reliability, all these things that they should be looking at. But these guys are struggling day to day with these problems. We thought that um, with capacity addition picking up speed and every year doing 20,000 and all that, we at least would have enough capacity in the country to meet the demand of the consumers. And then suddenly we were stalled by the crisis of, the, uh, of fuel. I mean, it was completely unexpected. So suddenly you're on the back foot you're trying to find out fuel for all the plants that have been commissioned, and you're trying to ration fuel as to how it can be done. I mean, the question of getting uh, projects to uh, deliver power to DISCOMs under long-term PPA 
was again driven by consumer interest. You had to ration fuel. How best do you ration fuel? You will ration fuel by saying that it will be given so that the ultimate benefit goes to the consumer and the best competitive price and the best competitive price available in the long term. So that is why it was driven by consumer interest when we said we will have to do that. There we could not see any other way of a rational way of rationing coal shortages. So uh, uh, at the end of that, what I want to say is distribution, there's enough given in the act. It's only a question of who will see that this is implemented. I mean, I had the, uh, since tariffs were not being revised, and uh, uh, I hope uh, Pramod has a little more time, another two minutes. Since tariffs were not being revised, tariffs should have been revised every year, uh, what I did was I became a petitioner before the APTEN. I mean, this was a little unprecedented, the Secretary of the Ministry of Power becoming a petitioner before APTEL, asking APTEL to review the functioning of the regulators uh, in terms of tariff setting. The regulators are extremely unhappy with me for having done this. But my only motivation was, if you feel that you have some pressures on you, if you feel that you need to look up to the political bosses to decide what you should be otherwise deciding, if there is a problem of distribution company going to the regulator, vis-a-vis -vis the state government or so on, then can there be a, uh, some kind of a diktat given to the uh, regulator so that he has to carry out this uh, task of re revising tariffs? So I went and became a petitioner before APTEL, and APTEL passed a judgment uh, dated 11-11-11, and that judgment has been, uh, has come in handy for everybody concerned, the regulator, the distribution company, and so on. The result was that uh, last year, uh, out of 28 states, the 29 states hasn't come yet, 28 states, 27 states revised tariffs. That was a remarkable thing in the history of uh, tariff uh, setting in the country after the regulators have been nominated. So, that could be done, then we could uh, look at uh, every possible uh, central government program which could be attached to tariff, tariff setting, tariff revision, ATNC loss reduction, and so on. But I'm sure tariff revisions will take place only because of the, high, uh, the APTEL order. It will also take place because in the financial restructuring program that the government of India initiated, we also set a five-year time frame for the distribution companies' finances to be, uh, you know, turned around, uh, become healthy, and so on. But this cannot be done for everything that the distribution company is expected to do or regulator expected to do. Now, what we, I think, we need to look at is what can be done to see that the provisions of the Act as they are contained are implemented in the interest of the consumer by the distribution company and probably uh, the uh, regulators doing their work independently? This probably is the question. Every time the uh, government of India uh, cannot intervene, and I fully agree with uh, what was uh, said by uh, my good friend Sanjeev Alwalia, that uh, power sector in the last 10 years has made attempts to decentralize. This is one area, the distribution segments, the finances and so on, is one area where the decentralization, all the authorities available with the distribution company, but that is not helped. Because the decision that you have to take to revise tariffs is essentially unpalatable. So somebody will have to tell you, please do it, and you'll have to pretend to be under some compulsion to do this. That seems to be the way things are. Uh, I also was uh, very pleased to see that when the regulators went around to hold their public uh, hearings in certain states, uh, which had not revised tariffs at all, and they were facing huge uh, power shortages. Uh, the regulators told them that I'm going to revise tariff this time, and this is only to give you power to the extent that you've been getting it today. There'll be no improvement. Don't expect that you will pay more money and you'll get any improvement. This is only to stay where we are. And since you've not paid for the last five years, there'll be no revision, 
This revision is just to ensure that the backlog is offset. I believe at that time the, uh, the public, the people who were there, the consumers, they were saying that who said we will not pay? We want service. We will pay. We will pay whatever it takes. And please ensure service. I hope this is true. I hope this is something that uh, our politicians also understand. Because if you're not going to in increase tariffs, that a state is not increased for 10 years, you're not going to increase tariffs, there is not going to be a power system. The board or the discom will simply be destroyed. So if you're interested that things are done, power gets supplied, then this periodical increase to ensure that you at least receive the cost of supply has to be there. We need to take power out of politics. We need to take politics out of power. Now, how we'll do this? I try to do it through a central intervention, through a court order, which will ensure that everybody revises tariff. But this cannot be done in every small step. I thought this is what we should discuss. Thank you.